Acute Otitis Media What is Acute Otitis Media? Acute stands for Abrupt Onset. Ot stands for Ear. Itis stands for Infection and Inflammation, while Media stands for Middle Ear. So, Acute Otitis Media means Inflammation of the Middle Ear. What are the stages of Acute Otitis Media? 1. Stage of Tubal Occlusion Since the middle ear drainage is entirely dependent on eustachian tube, the first step in acute otitis media is the blockage of eustachian tube. Children are particularly predisposed to acute otitis media because their eustachian tube is shorter, wider, and more horizontal as compared to adults, which increases the chances of their eustachian tube getting blocked. 2. Stage of presuppuration After the eustachian tube is blocked, the microorganisms start infecting. 3. Stage of suppuration. This is marked by formation of pus in the middle ear. Tympanic membrane starts bulging to the point of rupture. 4. Stage of resolution. The tympanic membrane rupture, with release of pus and subsidence of symptoms. Inflammatory process begins to resolve. If proper treatment is started early, or if the infection was mild, resolution may start even without rupture of tympanic membrane. 5. Stage of complication. If virulence of organism is high or resistance of patient poor, resolution may not take place and disease spreads beyond the confines of middle ear. Treatment 1. Antibacterial therapy. It is indicated in all cases with fever and severe earache. 2. Decongestant nasal drops. Nose drops should be used to relieve eustachian tube edema and promote ventilation of middle ear. 4. Analgesics and antipyretics help to relieve pain and bring down temperature. 5. Ear toilet. If there is discharge in the ear, it is dry mopped with sterile cotton buds and a wick moistened with antibiotic may be inserted. 6. Dry local heat. It helps to relieve pain. 7. Miringotomy. It is incising the drum to evacuate pus and is indicated when A. Drum is bulging and there is acute pain. B. There is an incomplete resolution despite antibiotics when drum remains full with persistent conductive deafness. C. There is persistent effusion beyond 12 weeks. All cases of acute suppurative otitis media should be carefully followed till drum membrane returns to its normal appearance. Chronic suppurative otitis media. Put simply, CSOM is a perforated tympanic membrane with persistent drainage from the middle ear lasting more than 12 weeks. CSOM is initiated by an episode of acute infection. The pathophysiology of CSOM begins with irritation and subsequent inflammation of the middle ear mucosa. The inflammatory response creates mucosal edema and increased middle ear discharge, eventually leading to tympanic membrane perforation. A perforation becomes permanent when its edges are covered by squamous epithelium and it does not heal spontaneously. Types of CSOM Clinically, it is divided into two types. 1. Tubotympanic, also called the safe or benign type. It involves anterior inferior part of middle ear cleft and is associated with a central perforation. There is little risk of serious complications. 2. Adicoantral also called unsafe or dangerous type. It involves posterosuperior part of the cleft, in other words, attic, antrum, and mastoid, and is associated with an attic or a marginal perforation. The disease is often associated with a bone eroding process such as cholesteatoma. Risk of complications is high in this type. Investigations 1. Examination under microscope 2. Audiogram It gives an assessment of degree of hearing loss and its type. 3. Culture and sensitivity of ear discharge. It helps to select proper antibiotic eardrops. Treatment. The aim is to control infection and eliminate ear discharge and, at a later stage, to correct the hearing loss by surgical means. 1. Oral toilet. Remove all discharge and debris from the ear. 2. Eardrops. Antibiotic eardrops are used. They are combined with steroids which have local anti-inflammatory effect. 3. Systemic antibiotics. 4. Precautions for patient. Patients are instructed to keep water out of the ear during bathing, swimming, and hair wash. 
5. Treatment of Contributory Causes Attention should be paid to treat causes contributing to disease, for example, adenoids and nasal allergy. 6. Surgical Treatment Once ear is dry, meringoplasty can be done to restore hearing. Menier's disease is named after a French doctor, Prosper Menier, who found that this condition originated in the inner ear, not the brain. Menier's disease is also known as primary idiopathic endolymphatic hydrops. It is a disorder of the inner ear where fluid is accumulated in the labyrinth or the semicircular canal. Menier's disease has four main symptoms with one special characteristic. They are periodic. Sometimes they are there, disturbing your day and social life. Sometimes they are not, giving you false hope that the disease is gone until it returns later. These symptoms are Vertigo. You have a spinning sensation that starts and stops spontaneously. Two or more episodes of vertigo occur without warning and usually last between 20 minutes to 12 hours. Go watch our video on vertigo as it is closely related to Meniere's disease. Hearing loss. Early on, you lose the ability to hear low to medium frequency sound or a mixture of low and high frequency when a vertigo occurs, but eventually it may become permanent. Tinnitus. It is the perception of hearing something, like buzzing, roaring, hissing, or whistling. When there is actually nothing. Oral fullness. It is when the sufferer feels pressure or fullness in the affected ear. Cause. Scientists are still unsure about the cause of Meniere's disease. But currently, they think that it involves both internal factors, such as immune system disorder, and poor fluid drainage, and for external factors, such as infection and allergy. Diagnosis. To confirm Meniere's disease condition, the most important thing is your symptoms and medical history. Tell your doctor as detailed as possible. Some of the many tests that can be helped are Electronystagmography. The test can be used to check the inner ear function based on your eye movement. Pure tone and speech audiometry. This is to confirm the hearing loss and rule out the nerve as the cause of your symptoms. Electrocochleography. This test put electrodes in your ear to measure the bioelectrical activity of the cochlea. Multifrequency tympanometry. It detects the resonance frequency of the tympanic membrane. It is non-invasive and can be done quickly. Related conditions. The symptoms and tests can help to separate Meniere's disease from other similar conditions. Some diseases that may have similar symptoms or even have a connection with Meniere's disease are labyrinthitis. It is the disturbance of the labyrinth caused by inflammation without fluid buildup. Sinusitis. It has fluid buildup as a key characteristic, but it happens in the Eustachian tube. Otitis media. When it occurs at a younger age, it can lead to Meniere's disease during adulthood. Lyme disease. Vectored by a tick, an infection caused by Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria may follow and manifest into hearing loss. Temporomandibular joint disorder. The treatment for this can also alleviate the symptoms of Meniere's disease. Management. There is no curative medication for Meniere's disease yet, but nausea, vomiting, and spinning sensation can be controlled by some medication. For example, antihistamine. Surgery can also be an option, especially if the disease is in a later stage. For example, endolymphatic sac procedure. The surgery is done to remove part of the mastoid bone to help access the sac and remove the fluid. Labyrinthectomy. This is when parts of the inner ears are removed, erasing the need for the balance and hearing functions. Vestibular nerve section. Parts of the nerve or the inner ear are surgically cut to correct vertigo. If further help is needed, seek communities or organizations that support hearing loss issues. Rest assured, the disease you are currently suffering from can be managed as long as you strive to get better. Practically everyone has had a sensation of a ringing sound in their ears now and then. Some people may describe it as a whistling or roaring sound. Familiar with this sound? It is one of the examples of the tinnitus sound. Tinnitus is a condition when a person hears a sound when there is no sound stimulus. It may sound simple, and yes, for some people, it is barely noticeable, but for others, it can lead to anxiety, sleep problems, or even depression. Classification. Tinnitus may have these characteristics. 
subjective, when only the patient can hear it, or objective, when the sound may be heard by another person, pulsatile, when the sound follows a steady pattern, or non-pulsatile, when it appears randomly. Primary tinnitus is caused by hearing loss, while secondary tinnitus has a specific known cause. Causes Tinnitus arises when the input to the auditory nerves is decreasing, for example, during silence. It causes a shift in the balance between the nerves in our brain and causes hyperactivity and increased bursting activity. The trigger of tinnitus may vary from obesity to vitamin deficiency. In contrast, objective tinnitus is typically caused by an underlying vascular or mechanical disorder. Diagnosis To diagnose tinnitus, first, we need to know the condition of the patients. Researchers have developed questionnaires to assess the tinnitus situation of a patient. Some of the questions are, is the sound in rhythm with your heartbeat? How is the characteristics of the sound? Is it buzzing, hissing or roaring? Do you have a personal or medical history, such as experiencing head trauma in the past? Physical examination would primarily consist of otoscopy and tuning fork tests. Some patients may require detailed neurological examination, including balance, cognitive function and cranial nerves. In case of pulsatile tinnitus, Oscillation around the ear and neck may be needed. Objective tinnitus will be audible to the examiner. Since significant tinnitus is commonly associated with hearing loss, audiometric tests for assessing the degree of hearing loss are essential. In cases where a vascular lesion, such as a paraganglioma, or a retrocochlear lesion, such as a vestibular schwannoma, is suspected, then imaging is required which includes a high-resolution CT scan and contrast-enhanced MRI. In patients where a systemic disease is suspected to be causing or worsening tinnitus, relevant lab investigations may be carried out. For example, thyroid hormone levels, complete blood count, and blood sugar levels. Management. If an underlying cause for tinnitus is detected, then that cause should be dealt with accordingly. For example, if a specific medicine caused it, stopping the pill for a while will help. If it is caused by earwax, then wax removal may be needed. Although there is no complete or definitive cure for idiopathic subjective tinnitus so far, it still can be treated effectively. When tinnitus is associated with hearing loss, try to correct this loss using the hearing aids or surgically if appropriate. Tinnitus masking mm. strategies may help patients by playing some white noises, like turning on fans in the room or playing the static radio. Tinnitus masking devices are also available to help drown out the sound of tinnitus. The negative psychological effect of tinnitus can be reduced with cognitive behavioral therapy. For some cases, anxiolytic or sedative medications may be needed. There are online forums for patients to share and discuss their tinnitus experiences. But do not take things at the face value. Some herbal medicines, exercises, and dietary modifications may work for some people, but not others. Yet putting chemicals in your ears may do more damage than benefit you. Whenever in doubt, consult a licensed medical professional and ear specialist. What's your experience with tinnitus? Share in the comments below and share this video with anyone you think would benefit.